The walking tour is about to begin. Walk this way. Walking tour, walk this way. You can hear me over there? You can hear me there? Great. Showtime. Walk this way. Oh, we're actually a bigger group than I thought. Okay, come closer. Don't get so, don't get so far. I don't bite yet. Hi, I'm Carlos Saldron, and I will be your architect and historical walking tour guide to the walled city of Intermodos for a very private performance called If These Walls Could Talk. And wherever photography is not permitted, just don't get caught. Carlos Sidran is a showman. Thank you very much. His tour is focused on the ancient city of Intramuros. It was once the heart of Manila. Intramuros was the centre of Spanish political, religious and military power in the region. All right, fellow Filipinos, hats off. Stand straight, hands over heart, face the Filipino flagpole. <laughs> and fellow Filipinos, a one, two, three, and bayang magiliw, perlas ng silanganan. He's passionate about his country's history and identity. Whose history am I reading? The American version of Philippine history, the Japanese version of Philippine history, Spanish version. We've never written our own. He wants the world to know there's more to the Philippines than drug wars and Islamic militants. Yay, thank you, Mr. Flagpole. <laughs> the Philippine National Anthem and not some random song that we Filipinos decided to sing. What's missing here is this journey or this search for self-actualization. Uh, the Filipino does not want to really take control of their own destiny. And I don't know where it comes from. It could come from Catholicism, the fatalism that it brings. But as a majority, uh, we probably would have somebody lead us rather than us lead ourselves. So Duterte is probably a reflection of us trying to find a hero once again. President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs has so far claimed thousands of lives. I mean, we can't fight facts. It's really happening. But it's also part of a larger problem in the Philippines, which is tribalism. We have a huge history, a terrible, terrible record when it comes to human rights. And then the Spanish come along in the 16th century, bring Catholicism. <laughs> And so now because of that, we have places with names like Santiago, San Agustin, Santa Ana, Santa Elena, Santa Isidro, Santa Isabel, Potenciano, San Pilar, San Joaquin, if you have a place named after the Santa or the Santa. <laughs> that place was probably named by the people brought those Santas to us. And if you speak Filipino, and who here speaks Filipino? Good. Well, I'm gonna speak it loud and speak it proud. Speak Filipino and you will see your history in the way you talk. This is a nation where language has long been a measure of who's in charge. <laughs> Right. But back then they said, poor Filipinos. With the Spanish language, they can only talk to countries that are poorer than them. So hey, let's do Filipinos a favor. Let's get rid of this backward Gothic they have called Spanish. And teach Filipinos the more enlightened language of English. And now that the United States was in charge of our fate and no longer the Catholic Church. Uh, the problem with the Philippines is that we don't look for leaders. Um, we've only been going through three ways when it comes to controlling the Philippines or governance. It's either the oligarchy controls the Philippines, the Catholic Church controls the Philippines, a despot controls the Philippines, and those are the only three. Manila will be the first city in Southeast Asia to have ice cream parlors. We're the first city to have hamburgers. <laughs> We had French fries. We were the first to have movie theaters. Well, Manila would also be the first city in Southeast Asia to have multi-level luxury department stores made out of concrete, fully air-conditioned with Otis elevators. But Manila would also be the first city in the region to have a proper sewage system, telephone system, electric system. We are the first to have toothpaste. We had toilet paper. <laughs> Charge! All of my philosophies begin and end by being an artist. So I think that art actually is one of the greatest catalysts in transforming a society. Um, and it has to do with the way things look, the way things are, perceptions. Because if I can't change the way Manila looks, I can change the way that you look at Manila. And that's basically what I've been trying to do for the past 15 years. From the Spanish to the Americans to the Japanese and back to the Americans, the Catholic Church has remained ever present in Philippines history. Theocracy! Hi. And theocracy is when a society 
is ruled by religious extremism. Just be careful when you let any religion tell your government what to do. Because it takes away a wonderful gift we all have that's called free will. Please, walk this way. Please be very careful with the steps. They're badly designed. Congratulations. Congrats. Walk this way. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pasig River! And this narrow river that created a city of 15 million people and all of us who are here right now. Without the, without the Pasig River, there would be no Mainilad. There's no flowers by the Pasig River. Without the Pasig River, there'd be no Tagalogs, no people who live by the river. Tagalog means Tagailog, people from the river. But also, it's standing right here that you can see the true majesty of Manila's location. And people forget how beautiful the city of Manila is because we live in malls. A lot of countries invest a lot in promotions of identity, arts and culture, advertising for tourism. The Philippines, pretty much, it's kind of like a free market economy when it comes to our identity. Little organic houses, little organic houses. So if the people themselves start taking control of their own identity, and start taking control of the way they're perceived by understanding their own history and arts and culture, then the higher chance we are of having the world see us in the way that we would like. Skip, 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 skip. We've forgotten about the Spanish-American War. We've forgotten about the Philippine-American War. We forgot about World War II. We forgot about martial law. So you know what, Duterte, I think we're in schedule to forget about him in around 20 years. Oh, no. I just probably, there's only one to say it in Filipino, no? Ginusto mo yan eh. You wanted it. You got him. Get ready for the turn.